Hello everybody. Hi, it's me, Pasta Linda NX. You are watching Growing with Pasta Linda NX. I've missed you guys so much. It's been a while since we did our shoot, but I have been so busy and it's been so exciting. I have an announcement that I will make at the end of this video. But all I can say for now is that, and I was reminded of this earlier, but to me I'd forgotten that I'd even said this, but when you're aligned to purpose, breakthrough is inevitable. So I'm seeing massive breakthrough and I'll share that with you shortly. So quickly to enter um, today's topic, because I really want to close out on the limiting beliefs topic. We've been at it for a while and as I said, I haven't shot um, anything for maybe close to two, three weeks now. So here goes, we're gonna do limiting beliefs and the last time we spoke, we were saying, and how do we break um, limiting beliefs? So I'm gonna take you through a six step process where you will be able to then uh, break your limiting beliefs and, 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 and start with a series of a new set of belief systems. Here goes. So you need to be able to identify the limiting belief. What do I mean by that? Uh, in, in earlier videos, we spoke about how we say, I'm not good enough, I'm not qualified, I don't have what it takes, I can't do this, I shouldn't do this, I mustn't do that. I think just find yourself a little corner and, and have your own little 10-15 um, minute retreat where you are identifying these, look and say, what is it that I say I cannot do? What are those things that I believe are impossible for me? What are those things that I'm afraid of? What are those things that I believe I'm not able to achieve? And write them down. Write every single one of them down and give them a name. You know, a, a sort of say this is uh, procrastination. And you have a limiting belief that I can't make it on time for whatever reason that you can't ever make it on time and the things that are associated with your procrastination. Write them down. Things like I, I can't be a this or I can't achieve a that. Write them down call them by their name so that you can clearly identify them so that when you are breaking them, you know exactly what it is that you're dealing with. For instance, if you say, I'm not able to lose weight if this and that is happening, or I'm not able to read a, a book and finish it, I'm not able to become a, a, a scientist, whatever the limiting belief is, and there are many, and I was saying to you the last time that, and they are false. They are some things that have been so hard pressed into your mind, into your thinking, into your subconscious mind. You've heard them over and over and over and over again to the point where you don't have an option but to believe them. So how you shatter them is firstly identify them, know them, call them by name, and then um, know and understand that there is a reason why you have them. So each one, deal with, maybe, maybe even deal with one a day uh, where you say, this is the limiting belief and then find the reason. Why is it that uh, you have this, uh, this particular limiting belief? Think about it and, and try and understand where it comes from. You know, why is it that I believe I can't do this? Why is it that as far as I'm concerned, this is an impossibility for me? Identify the reasons, I, I jot them down. It's, it's often not one reason because the one reason gives validation to the next, the next reason gives credence to the other. So maybe do yourself an exercise and say, I'm gonna find a limiting belief and I'm going to give myself five reasons why I have this limiting belief. Why is it that I believe that I'm not able to do this, right? The next one is um, extinguish the sting of the limiting belief. What do I mean by extinguish the sting of the limiting belief? So disprove the, the validity of the limiting belief. If you've always felt, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z, find a way why that is not valid, right? Uh, give the contrary, give the contrast. Um, indicate, find reasons why this belief is not credible, why the opposite is actually true. For instance, if you say, um, I, I can't walk in the dark, I can't walk in the dark, Getara. I can't walk in the dark, find a reason why this is, find a reason, find a reason why it is that this is invalid. You know, things like, you no, know, why is it that I can't walk in the dark? Why, what has happened, as we said, that's step two. And then go to, if I can't, walk in the dark why is it that other people walk in the dark what is in the dark who dies in the dark and what are the things that happen in the dark 
and that would happen to me exclusively that don't happen to other people so find a, a way in which you literally pull out the sting of this limiting belief and, 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 and try and understand why it is actually possible for you to walk in the dark. What benefits would there be for you walking in the dark? And, and um, walking in the dark is but an example. It could be driving. You know, some people believe I can never ever drive. I am terrified. Ask yourself, if I can't drive, why is it that the girl next door can drive? Why is it that my, my younger sibling can drive? What is happening on the road that would happen exclusively to you and just remove that um, that sting of the limiting belief right so it's not credible that you not you, you cannot drive this limiting belief is not credible it is an incredible unless if you don't have arms and you don't have legs but even still there are people who don't have limbs that can drive so if you have limbs um, and, and, and and you have your eyesight why is it that you can't drive right so remove whatever fallacy whatever notion whatever fear whatever it is that has freaked you out and into believing when you can't so once you've removed the sting of the limiting belief you then establish a new and an alternative belief right so as far as the limiting belief um i believe and and it, uh, go to i believe i can drive and and start indicating your new desire start finding reasons why you should drive um, find reasons that will give you um, a list of benefits, you know, so identify benefits of you being able to drive. Driving will A, be cheaper for me, it will, I'll be able to get there in time, it will be convenient for me, I'll be able to get to many different places in a day and it, it, it just opens up a whole new world for you. You are able to go to certain other places that you would not ordinarily be able to get to and I can go and see my aunt and I can go and see my cousin and then I can be in Pretoria. The convenience of it. So. Once you have extinguished the sting of the limiting belief, whatever the limiting belief is, then find uh, the new and the alternative which are opposite to the actual limiting belief. So I can drive, I want to drive, I should drive because when I do drive, this and this become possible for me. And then the next phase I like because I'm a, I'm a bit of a dreamer. So this is a, a dream state or an envisioning. Envision yourself driving. Right? Envision yourself driving, see yourself in the car, feel the sun on your hands when they're on the steering wheel, feel the wind blowing in your hair, whatever it is that you are seeing that is contrary to what you would ever experience for as long as you are caged in the limiting belief, then see the opposite, feel the, feel the opposite, what would it feel like, what would you be seeing, what would you be hearing, what would happen next to you, around you, past you, you know, those kind of things. These then give uh, 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 validity, not just validity, but they also give strength to the new belief that you're trying to inculcate, right? So as I was saying, um, what would it be like, what it would feel like, what it would sound like, what would be different, and um, you know, this new, this new belief is then empowering. You empower this belief, you, you just add on to it. And remember we said that um, the scripture that we had anchored our, our, our belief systems around uh, was, was the, the renewal of the mind, the transformation of the person. And we also had looked at Joshua 1.8 where we had said that you do things over and over and over. You meditate, you repeat over and over and over. So if you're going to... Um, demolish a limiting belief it's not going to help you to sit there for uh, two hours and think you're going to demolish the limiting belief it's over and over for you to have this new belief system you've got to know and understand that the previous one took years to inculcate took years to ingrain and establish in your mind so equally repeat over and over and over the vision the thought the feel the sights the sounds the taste even of what it would be like to be in your own car, driving your own, your own car. So this new belief is going to require time, is going to require repetition for it to be settled, for it to become your new belief, right? And then after that, set this new empowered belief system into your subconscious mind. How do you do that? You do affirmations over and over and over again. You talk about it. You 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 visualize it. You keep it. We spoke earlier about the RAS, which was the reticular activation system, where you focus your mind on thinking. You pray about it. You 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 speak to colleagues about it. You 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 just make it so very topical. You make it so very 
um, active and alive within your mind and, 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 and you give thanks, you know, an attitude of gratitude makes so many things come closer. So you pray about it, you give thanks, you, you go to God and you thank him for your new car, you thank him for your ability to drive, you thank him, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord that I got my learner's license and, and you believe this, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you, you, you just go and, and, you know, Jesus Christ, um, I keep saying was the master coach as far as I'm concerned. But, but he, he, would, he would put things plain and, and, and in putting them, he would use parables. And the reason he used parables is so that the mind could perceive. So you perceive, you see this new belief system. You see yourself in there. You believe it. You say it to yourself. Speak those things that are not as though they are. You know, all this is in scripture, right? So you speak those things as though they are. You tell yourself over and over. You thank God, you know, attitude of gratitude. I have my car, I have my license, I have my learners. Who give now all? I'm driving down to Pretoria, down the M1. And you believe this, you affirm it over and over and over again. Limiting beliefs is saying there are certain things that I can't do, even though Christ strengthens me. So the minute you then say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I can drive through that very Christ who strengthens me, and you believe this and you repeat it over and over and over, you affirm it, you visualize it. And once you've removed that sting of the original limiting belief, believe you me, it does happen and it does, it does stay and it gets ingrained in your mind. So they say it takes 21 days to establish a new habit. Let's try this, you know, try this today. Write down your limiting beliefs, call them by name, identify them, then remove their validity, right? Speak the contrary. And then once you've done that, um, remove the, 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 the sting, remove the sting of the limiting belief, establish a new and alternative belief system, a new and alternative belief, Envision it, envision it, envision it, and then affirm it. Affirm it, affirm it, hold it, possess it. You can manifest it if you believe it. Remember, Mudimu Arata, and um, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm happy that we are able to do this session. I will see you on the flip side. Bye.